Welcome to another math video where we learn all about numbers. Yes, and specifically today we're going to be learning about factors. Woohoo! We're talking lesson 6.4 with our Grow Math. Let me go ahead and get my wonderful little tool here I like to use to draw emphasis what our topic is going to be. Now, let's go ahead and look at our essential question. It says, how can you write a whole number as a product of its prime factors? Ooh, that's a lot to take in. Let's slow this down here. Whole number, product, and prime factors. There's a lot of terminology there, words that we may not know. And so whole numbers, I think you're pretty clear. Zero, one, two, three, nothing. Like fractional, no decimals, no fractions. The product, hmm, here we just learn here that factors are numbers that are multiplied to form a product. So it's almost like the answer of a multiplication problem. And of course, prime factors, we're gonna talk about what prime factors are. But first, let's take a look at just what our factors are. Factors then, the two and three, are factors of six because two times three is six. Pretty simple, I would say. Now a prime number, however, it's a whole number greater than one that has exactly two factors, one and itself. All right, itself being I can choose any number, 13, and then I multiply it with one, and I get 13. This is exactly two factors. There are no more factors that you could multiply to get 13. An impossibility, my friends. Therefore, we say that 13 is a prime number. Same with two. Two times one, two. I can't Think of any other factors that you could multiply to get two. There are none. Therefore, we say that two is prime. Now, on the other hand, a composite number is a number that's greater than one, but has more than two factors. Okay, that has exactly two factors. And this one here has more than two. And that's important, I would think, because when you're looking at trying to find prime numbers. This is a composite number can be written as a product of its prime factors. Now that might be a little bit confusing. So let's take a look at that. Let's take the number six. Okay, six is two times three. Now, six is not a prime number because we can also find two other factors, one times six, which equals six. Therefore, the factors of six are one, two, three, and six. It has four factors. However, it can be written, as it states here, as its prime factors. That would be two and three. As you can see, two times three is six, and both two and three are prime numbers, uh, according to this definition. It has exactly two factors two and three. All right, let's go ahead and ding, ding the next page. Here we go. Ring down the curtain. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know why I like doing that. It's just so much fun. Yay, okay, we have a word problem. It says we have to unlock the problem. This is, this is real world. Okay, it says Marcel makes mathematical patterns in his paintings with vertical stripes. Okay, how'd you guys get there? <coughs> Excuse me, you did not. <laughs> I don't know, that's just magical? I don't know, somehow. So, for his next painting, it says each stripe will be the width in inches of one of the prime factors of the total width of the painting. You can see where that gets confusing. He wants his painting to have a width of 20 inches. Marcel needs to determine all the prime factors of 20 so he will know the width of each stripe. What are the prime factors of 20? Now, I'm going to be honest with you folks, okay? This is Mr. Wara off the record. Really, is Marcel really going to use this type of method? Well, it says it's real world, real world here. It seems kind of strange <laughs> that he would make his stripes based on that. But let's simplify this, okay? I'm just guessing that a few of you are like, huh? Okay, it says he wants his painting to have a width of 20 inches. Okay, that I get. Marcel needs to determine all the prime factors of 20 so he will know the width of each stripe. Okay, I'll, I, I can be okay with that. 
what are the prime factors of 20? So let's just go ahead and find the prime factors of 20. Oh, I guess the book has already been in for you, or so it seems. It says here, it says that, make a list to find the factors, okay? So the pairs of factors that form the product 20, meaning again, two factors when multiplied gives you the product. So one times 20 is 20, remember? That is the identity property of multiplication. Two times 10 is 20, four times five is 20, and 20 has a lot of factors. We definitely know 20 is a composite number because it does not have exactly two, but it actually has more than two. So the factors of 20 are, well, we'll write them down. One, we tend to do this sequentially. We don't put them in order. Four, we did two, four, five, and then two times 10 is 20, and then finally, one times 20 is 20. Now it says, find which of the factors are prime. Okay, well, we can do that. Let's go ahead and pull out my red, like my red. So one, is one prime? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Let's see, one times one is one. Hmm, though it may seem like that it has exactly two factors, it does not because one is being repeated. Therefore, one only has one factor. <laughs> it's a one. Okay, numero uno, sorry buddy. You are not a prime number, nor are you a composite number. Then what are you, one? You know, I really don't know, but you're neither of those. If you have some special name, I don't know. But you are not prime, and you are not composite. However, two we know is a prime number because one times two equals two. It has exactly two factors, and there are no others. Therefore, it has to be prime. Four, on the other hand, no. If I list four, you could do one times four, and you could do two times two. Well, one times four, and then two times two, you can see it has one, two, three factors. We don't repeat the two. It's already been listed. Therefore, four, sorry, you're composite. Five, you're prime, because one times five equals five, and again, there are no others. But with 10, you could do one times 10, you could do two times five, that will give you 10. 20, of course, we know there's lots of factors. So. Does one have exactly two factors? No, it does not. That's an interesting. They just put that in there. Repeat for each factor. So circle the prime numbers, which we did, and we determined that is two and five. So those are the two prime factors of 20. Now two times five does not equal 20. We're just saying those are the two prime factors. Prime meaning that they have exactly two factors. Okay, are you with us? Yeah, what am I getting here? Oh, I guess we could do this and be careful of this here. You see what that is, right? I'm gonna move it away, but that's still gonna be that letter, all right? Move around, that went kind of quickly too. I hope you were paying attention. Pay attention, Tom, pay attention. Okay, now it has example, use a diagram. Okay, it says Dion, I think that's her name, has forgotten the code for her locker. How unfortunate. She remembers that the four one-digit numbers in the code shows 36 written as a product of its prime factors. Okay, that's odd that she would remember that, but okay. One of the numbers in Dion's, uh, Dion's, Dion? Dion, maybe Dion's code. I don't know, I'm trying. I don't think I've spelled, seen it spelled that way before. Anyways, choose any two factors with a product of 36. Continue finding factors until only prime factors are left. So we're going to find two factors of 36. Cool, get it. Continue finding factors until they're all prime. Oh, okay. This sounds like the factor tree. Yes, I do believe this is the factor tree. Look at it, it's a tree. And let's see how easy this is. This is so much fun. My goodness, you guys are gonna to wanna to do this all day long. Use a basic fact, okay. Think, six times something is equal to 36. Okay, the doubles, that's really easy. So we have six times six equals 36. So we put our 36 because that is the number we're starting with. And here's our six. Oh, so because this is a factor, meaning multiply, that must mean there's a six over here. Six times six, 36. Cool, but we don't stop there because we are trying to continue finding factors until prime factors are left. And it just so happens Am I just imagining things or did I lose my six here? 
I almost did, didn't I? Didn't I have a sixter? Ah, does my pen get no glitchy on me? Wow, that was pretty spooky. I just turned and looked and went, where did my sixes go? It's like everything changed. Okay, now we come over here. So then six is not prime because two times three is six. And the same over here, two times three is six. Interesting. Now is two prime? Yes. Three prime? Yes. So now I have all these prime numbers. But I like to, when I did the factor tree, I like to make the flowers at the very end. I know it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yep. It is. You circle them and then you say, okay, two times two times three times three. And again, we tend to write this sequentially. We get in the habit of doing that. You could put these in any order. Again, the commutative property tells us that we can do that. Now, we're saying here, try option B. Use a divisibility rule. Now, a divisibility rule, or just the word divisible, like divide, suggests that we could divide the number so that we don't get a remainder. For example, if you just take the number four, we can't divide the four by three because you're gonna end up with a remainder. Four divided by three, not gonna work. However, four divided by two does. So what we say is, we say that four is divisible by two because we can divide four by two and get an answer that won't end up in a remainder. So in this case, this is true for 36. We can actually use divisibility rule, which means that 36, we can divide by two. If you're wondering how we know, well, it ends in zero, two, four, six, or eight. And in this case, it's 36, it's an even number. If it's an even number, it can be divided by two. In this case, doubling 18 will give us the 36. Now what's neat here is, technically this two should already make the flower here. They kind of do their tree a little bit different, but that's the same flower, okay? I don't know, that's how I do mine. Same difference, okay? So it's just one, two. And over here we would have our 18. Now 18 is not prime, therefore we have to continue on. Well, 18 is two times nine, so the nine would go there. That would get us back to 18. Now again, the two, like we're done, so here's our flower at the end. Again, they keep drawing the line two going all the way down. I don't tend to do that. Uh, I, I, I like to just go and say, okay, we're done here. This guy's prime, now let's continue. All right, I hope I'm not confusing you by that, but I'm just trying to make sure that's clear. The nine, of course, is three times three, so we would put our three here. Now we have two times two times three times three, which is interesting because that's exactly what we got on the other one. But look at that, you can always check your work. Two times two is four, three times three is nine. Is it four times nine? Woo, 36? It sure is, my friends. I think it is. Now, let's see if there's anything else down here. I think that is it. I think we've come to the end of this very easy, easy lesson. So, since I have not given you everything, I don't think, let's see, what have I given you? I think you need to add this on the end. Hope you can read that letter, kind of sloppy. To me, it's like a duh, like a dog. <clears throat> okay, so with that, my friends, I'm going to tell you. Maybe.